And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Chris Goes, Vic and Sade. You know, I've been doing a little investigating lately. I've been asking husbands about their favorite cakes. Well, one of their favorite cakes is dark, moist chocolate cake covered with a thick fudge icing. They also go for the old-fashioned spicy kind of cake, like uh, applesauce cake. Now, you're probably saying, what's this man up to? Does he want me to make more cakes? <laughs> well, I guess you can see right through me, because I do want you to make more cakes. But I want you to make them an easy way, with new, creamier Crisco. Now, I hope you won't let another single day go by without discovering what a real help new Crisco can be to you. Why, it may change all your ideas about cake making. Because, you see, new Crisco is now made by the new gyro churn process, a million-dollar process that actually pre-creams Crisco. Yes, that means you can mix your Crisco, sugar, and eggs together in one operation. And, boy, your arm's going to be mighty glad not to have any hard creaming to do. And just look at that clock. See the minutes you've saved. And when you open your oven door, what a cake you're going to see. Light as a snowflake, or I'll miss my bet. And when you serve it to your family, it'll melt away just like a snowflake, too. Now... I'll bet that right this minute, every one of you ladies who've baked Crisco cakes for years are nodding your heads. I'll bet you're agreeing Crisco is even grander now. And you're right, for the new gyro churn process beats, whips, and creams Crisco hundreds of times. So the new Crisco comes out creamier than, well, almost creamier than anything you can imagine. Why, one grand cook, Mrs. G.J. Siebel of Long Island, says, quote, I'm a better cake maker than ever now that I'm using the new, faster-mixing Crisco, unquote. Well, that's right, Mrs. Siebel, and all you makers of coconut cakes, orange cakes, Lady Baltimore cakes, just try new, creamier Crisco. And you can also depend on it for tender pie crust and really delicious fried foods. Well, sir, it's a few minutes past nine o'clock in the evening as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook abiding quietly at home. They've been playing rummy for the last hour or so, and the game has begun to take on a sluggish, lackluster quality. Listen. I win. Let me see your cards. Yeah. Sure you win. Got three queens, three deuces, and the four, five, six, and seven of hearts. Well, there was interest in rummies after about so long a time. The spades start resembling clubs. You any quick? Would you just as soon? <laughs> All right. Not much kick to the game when your opponent's half asleep. I am a little tired. Too early to go to bed? Courthouse clock struck nine about five minutes ago. Oh. Well, I bet I sleep so sound tonight you could send my undershirt to Detroit, Michigan, past the post. Paper states showers sometime before morning. I hope they hurry along and cool things off. Oh. I'll deal out a few more rummies. Might as well be doing something. Okay. Kind of funny that Davis boy storming in here this evening, wasn't it? I've learned that there's nothing extraordinary in the most un understandable behavior on the part of 14-year-old boys. Being the father of a 14-year-old boy, I'm tooted in all Here's ways. Here's your 14-year-old boy now. Raj? Hi. Here's a beautiful bouquet of tickets for you, Charlie. Thanks. Hope I can tell the hearts from the clubs. The hearts are red, the clubs black. I mean the uh, diamonds from the spades. After so many rummies, I get so I can't keep my mind on what well, I'm doing. Well, didn't disturb you when he came after rotten suitcase a while ago, did he? Not mm -hmm. too much. Of course, I had to climb upstairs after. Well, it helped along the excitement. By George, I never enjoyed such <clears throat> high-class excitement in my life. What excitement do you have reference to, Sunburn? Center Street. Has there been excitement on Center Street? I'm discarding the six of clubs. I can use it in my business. <laughs> I beat your father three times in a row. And didn't Rooster explain? Explain what? About Center Street. No, what about it? Rooster never said a word. He come to the door all out of breath and wanted that big old imitation leather suitcase you borrowed off of his brother. Gov went after it and he grabbed it and was gone. Well, I'll be darned. Why? What happened on Center Street? A house collapsed. Ah. You telling the truth, you don't know about it? We've been sitting here playing cards ever since around 7.30. Never heard no noise? Never heard no people yelling? Never heard a sound. Telephone hasn't even rung. Except for roosters storming in, it's been quiet as my thumb. Pizza Dutch. <laughs> House collapsed, you say, temper bells? Yeah. I collapsed one time myself. I was on the outskirts of Cleveland, Ohio, where I just officiated at a wedding ceremony. 
After kissing the bride, I pocketed the $5 bill given me by the bridegroom and prepared... You know that place in the 300 block on South Center with the second-story porch that runs clear around the whole house? Has it got fragile hedgerows and morning glories and a solid gold belfry which catches the dazzling... Give me a show, Gov. That place collapsed this evening. It is the nine of spades, Sadie. I trust you. You were talking about that big boarding house looking place, Willie. Sure. It collapsed at eight o'clock. Well, what do you mean by collapsed? Fell down. Ah. A great big mud. The whole thing didn't fall down. Just that second story veranda fell down. But to look at it, you'd think the entire house had been hit by a cyclone. That's the truth. If it's not the truth, you can send my undershirt to St. Paul, Minnesota, cash on delivery. If it's not the truth... Was anybody hurt? And not a soul. And it's the luckiest thing since the bullet that choked Billy Patterson. Why, that second story veranda weighs tons and tons. It crashed like thunder. Busted the first floor porch into smithereens. Broke every window in the house. There's chunks of lumber and splinters of wood scattered up and down Center Street for half a block. You're not exaggerating, are you? You're not making a mountain out of some trivial accident? No, sir. Hope to die if I've twisted the facts. Hey, why don't you people put on your hat and stroll over there? See for yourself. It's just like I say. Center Street is cluttered up with debris for half a block in both directions. Well, what happened? The doggone second-story veranda collapsed from old age. The pillars were weak. I believe that. Ruthie and I noticed the place just last week when we were walking past. That upstairs porch that circles the house was sagging in half a dozen places. Sure. It was bound to happen sooner or later. And it happened tonight. I'm surprised you individuals never heard the crash. Where were you when it happened? Standing out in front of the By Joe Pitcher Show. I was in the Society of Bluetooth Johnson. By George, we were in the 300 block on South Center in two seconds. Looks like we did miss some excitement. Missed half your life. Come on, slap on your hat. We'll go over there. Oh, it's all over and done with now. Probably still a crowd of people hanging around, though. No fooling. To look at that house, you think it got caught between nine set clothes. Uh-huh. Come on, Gov. You and me will hike the center street. I'd like to beg off, Arthur. It's too warm an evening to work myself up over a porch falling off a house. Okay. Certainly a good thing nobody got injured. Yes, indeed. I remember the place you're talking about very well. Just last week, Ruthie and I walked past. Seems to me she passed some remark. Look how that old upper story porch sags or something. Peculiar Rooster didn't give you the details when he come after Rotten Suitcase. Guess he was too excited. What is his big hurry for his brother's suitcase when there was so much free entertainment going on? Oh, gosh. I haven't told you about Rotten yet. What did Rotten do? Rotten Davis, Gov. Had the most magnificent evening of his entire career. How so? He made off to the crowd. It was his fault the house collapsed. Huh? You should have seen him. He was running back and forth in front of the ruins, screaming. I lost my temper, he kept yelling. I lost my temper. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was making a public spectacle out of himself. Yeah. Five minutes after the big crash, about 200 people were on the spot. They didn't know what happened. They just saw this house all busted to pieces and lumber laying around every place. And here was Rotten Davis, tearing his hair and rushing around crazy. I lost my temper, he kept screaming. I lost my temper. <laughs> the people who got the notion Rotten had lost his temper and torn the whole house down? Sure, they got that notion. Oh, my. It was a magnificent thing to witness. The crowd opened up an alley for Rotten to run back and forth in. And he ran back and forth in it till who laid the chunk. I lost my temper, he hollered. I lost my temper, and look what I've done. Remember now, the house looked like it had been hit by a cyclone. An innocent bystander gets it take nine men eight days to do that much damage. Oh, my. Rotten Davis seen his opportunity and grabbed it. He had that enormous throng of people in the palm of his hand. If he'd looked tough at any of them, he'd have started from home 90 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful, I tell you. If I had a boy that was such a smarty show-off, I'd hey, bet and Rooster worked hand in glove with him. Rooster deserves 50% of the credit for his brother's sensational hoax. I was going to inquire, what did Rooster want with the suitcase? Wanted was... it to take back to Rotten. It's all plastered up with foreign labels, you know. Foreign labels impressed the general public. Soon as Rotten got hold of that suitcase, he started running between the divided crowd of people with it. I told you they separated and left him space to run back and forth in, didn't I? Yeah. Made kind of a lane for him. Well, he'd run from one end of the lane to the other. When he got to one end, he'd stop and set down his suitcase. Then he'd give the people a chance to read the foreign labels. Nome, Alaska, London, England, Paris, France, Rotterdam, Holland, Brussels, Belgium, Stockholm, Sweden, and so on. All the time, he kept hollering he'd lost his temper and torn down the house. Then he'd pick up his suitcase and run to the other end of the lane. 
Do the same thing over again. I lost control of my temper, he screamed. I lost control of my temper and tore down this house in three minutes with my bare hands. His mother ought to take him by the coat collar. Let me tell you another trick he used to heighten the effect. He was wearing goggles. When he sent Rooster after his suitcase, he also had him stop by home and pick up an aviator's helmet and goggles that used to belong to some friend of his that owned a motorcycle. Oh, it was magnificent, God. Uh, Betty Joyce. Carrying his suitcase all plastered up with foreign labels and wearing an aviator's helmet on his head with the uh, goggles pulled down over his eyes and running back and forth like he'd gone crazy. I lost my temper. I lost my temper. Yeah. For a boy, that's almost a grown-up man. And every think. once in a while, he'd holler to Rooster. Hey, he'd holler. How many bodies have they found so far? And Rooster, he was back in the shadows, would put on a deep voice and answer, Six so far. Seven so far. Eight so far. You know. <laughs> Ain't he going on 19 years old, Rush? Rotten, yeah. Well, imagine a boy 19 years old behaving. Mom, he had the most magnificent evening of his entire career. I'd give him the most magnificent. Oh, and another feature that was dandy. Three young ladies he likes were in the crowd. Hmm? Three very handsome young ladies he's ambitious to escort to the picture show and places were present. I bet he's their hero now. Oh, boy. You seem to have had just about as satisfactory an evening as Rotten did. I had a delightful evening. Mm. A delightful evening. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And there we leave Crisco's Vic and Sade until the next time. Now, while you're in your store today, why don't you get new Crisco, the new creamier Crisco that's made wonderfully creamy by the amazing new million-dollar gyro churn process. Bake a cake for supper tonight. You'll be delighted when you see what an elegant cake you get so quickly and easily the new Crisco way. Why, just listen to what one cooking expert, Mrs. Margaret E. Thomas of New York City says, quote, it's amazing how easy cake mixing is with creamy Crisco. Crisco blends in a few stirs, cutting out all hard creaming. Yet Crisco cakes are as light as if made the old slow hard way, unquote. Now that's what one expert says, but let me add that hundreds of cooking experts use new Crisco. In fact, out of 753 teachers in public schools from coast to coast, nine out of ten of these teachers said... We use new Crisco in our cooking classes. So get new Crisco. Try it for cakes, for flaky tender pie crusts, for crisp golden fried foods. And don't forget to listen to Crisco's Vic and Save the next time. This is Ralph Edwards speaking. <laughs>